In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Illustrator to set up a job for a universal laser system. I already have a template set up, which I'll share in the video description, and I'm going to open it now. File new from template, and I'll go and browse where I've got this saved on my computer and click new. So you want to go to file new from template, not file open, because if I open the template, now I'm editing it. If I do new from template, it creates a new file based on the template. So that is an important distinction. This template is set up for a VLS 350, which has a 24 inch by 12 inch bed. If you have a different size bed, I can quickly change that by going to file, document setup, then I'll go to edit artboards, artboard options, and then I can change the size of the bed, the width or the height to match the size of the system that I have. And then when you hit OK, and I'll just do that here, I'll make it 24 by 18. You can see it updates, and then after I'm done, I'll click exit. If I then wanted to save this as a new template, file, save as, I'll select the Adobe Illustrator template, and I could call this VLS 460 or 475 template. Now I've got another template that is for a different size. In my case, I do want to just use the VLS 350 size because that's the system I have. So I'll reopen new from template, and we're back to where we were, or I could have just edited the artboard again, either way. So the first step to create something is I need to draw a shape. So I'm going to go over to the rectangle tool. If you see these little arrows next to any of the tools, if you hold the mouse button down, then you'll see the other options here. Um, I'm just going to select rectangle and then you can find the hotkeys as well. So that's something useful if you're using them all the time. And what we're going to make today is just a simple luggage tag with my name on it. So here's the first rectangle for the luggage tag. When I select an item on the right hand side of the screen, the properties come up. The transform option will allow me to change the position of it. So if I know I want this exactly at half inch in X and half inch in Y, as I change this, you'll see the position of it is changing. Now that's also based on the reference point I've selected. So this position is the top left corner of the shape. If I wanted to change the center position, then I need to select the center. So I'll be changing the, this position because I've got the center reference point selected. If I want to change the overall size, of course I can just drag it, but that's not terribly accurate. If I want to accurately change the size, I could say on the width and height, I'll make this 3.5 inches wide, hit enter, and then I will make this 2.5 inches tall. And again, the reference point does matter here because it is changing based on the selection of the reference point. You can see it's evenly changing above and below the reference point. Had I selected the top left corner and made this 3.5 or I'll do four, you'll see everything is gonna move out towards the right because I've got that top left reference point selected. I'm gonna change this back, 3.5 now. If I wanna give this rectangle or radius, I'll select it and you'll see this handle here. And if I click it and drag, I can give it a radius. Now the next step is going to be to change the color of the outline as well as the thickness of the outline. Universal laser systems use line thickness and color to determine how to process the file. There are three main processes, vector cut, which uses red lines, vector engrave, which uses blue lines, and raster engrave, which uses black and gray scale. Since we want to cut this shape out, we're going to make the outline red and the thickness of the line 0 0.01 point, which is the thickness used in Illustrator to get universal driver to understand that we want to cut this. So first step is change the color here to red. And when I select off of it, you'll see now the line is red, but it's relatively thick. If I select it again, I need to change the point from 1 to 0 0.01 and hit enter. And now when I click off of it, you'll see how thin that line has gotten. And this has to do with how Illustrator is rendering the artboard. 
in computers that have a GPU installed or graphics card installed, it defaults to using that graphics card for rendering. And sometimes this makes the lines look very thin. So what we can do is turn that off and we can go up to view and then select preview on CPU. And this will typically cause the artboard to show the graphic a little bit clearer like you see when I make that selection. So my next step is to create a second path that I'm going to etch. Again, red is going to cut. Blue is the color to etch. And if I select it and press Control C to copy, Control V to paste, I now have a duplicate which I can select and I'll change the stroke from red to blue. Change that to blue. Now we see we have two shapes. They're exactly the same size though and I don't want them right on top of each other. So I need to make this second one a little bit smaller. I'm gonna select that and now with it selected, I can change the size obviously by just dragging any of these handles, but I wanna keep the proportions the same. So if I click and drag, you can see I can change the proportions, but if I hold shift on the keyboard while I'm dragging, it keeps the proportions the same. So I'm gonna make this just a little bit smaller while holding shift and let go. Now I know that's gonna be smaller and it's gonna maintain the proportions. I'll highlight both objects by clicking and dragging a box over both. And when I do that, Illustrator knows that I might wanna align these. So I can align the centers horizontally. So when I click that, you'll see the centers are now aligned. And then I can align the centers vertically. And now that puts them both right in the middle. Now, if I still want to edit this, I certainly can do that. Maybe I wanna make it a little bit bigger or smaller. Again, I'll click and drag the handle, but holding shift in this case doesn't work very well because it's no longer centered. I can fix that by then clicking off of it and then aligning them again, or while holding shift, I can add alt. And when I add alt, now it drags it from the middle, making it a lot easier to very quickly change the uh, size of it while keeping it centered and maintaining the proportion. So shift and alt while dragging will allow you to do that. Now my next step here is going to be to get an ellipse tool so I can create a circle cutout for the keychain portion of the luggage tag I'm creating. And then of course, again, I want this to be a perfect circle. So as I'm dragging this, I can click and hold shift and that will create a perfect circle. You can see the size, the width and the height is 0.37. So that's good enough for what I want. And again, I need to change this and it leaves the last color you selected as the stroke color. I need to change this to red because I want this to cut. The next thing is if I align this object to the rectangle that I have here, when I click this, it moves it. So one way to get everything to move together would be I could first group these. So I'll highlight both of them, go up to object and group, and now everything moves together. So I don't doesn't matter which shape I select, the other shape that's grouped with it will move with it. So I'm gonna highlight both of these, and then I'm going to select Vertical Align Center. I don't really wanna put this right in the middle, but I also don't really wanna put it right on the edge because then it will create a hole all the way through. So I can start there, but then I can select the circle, and then I'm just using the right key on the keyboard just to tap it in a little bit, and I don't have any specific dimension I need to add there, so I'm just, tapping it in a few times, but you can adjust the position how you want. My next step is I wanna put some text on here. So I'll select my text tool, and then some people like dragging a box, but that uh, sometimes limits, it makes it a little bit more difficult to edit, in my opinion, after the fact sometimes. So I'm gonna do undo on that, and I'm just gonna click once. I'm gonna type Alex's luggage select off of that and when I when I enter text that way it allows me to select the text and then I can use the same techniques to drag it so I can hold shift and maintain the text proportions now what I'll do is select my circle and holding shift select either of these paths these are already grouped I want to group the circle with the other groups and so now everything moves together and that's gonna help me for arranging this. Now, if I click and drag, you can see all of the different points that, that Illustrator's finding that I might want to snap to. So that's, that's one easy way to get it right 
where you want it. You can use those snaps or now I can highlight everything and if I want this perfectly centered, I can select my alignment tools and then maybe I want this over to the right a little bit. So that is my design and ready to go. And if I thought maybe that this is a little bit large, I can, I can still play with this a little bit. Um, the only problem is since I've now grouped this circle, I'm changing the proportions of that. So what I might do, say I wanted to change this, I'll select this object, object ungroup. Now this is ungrouped, but this is still grouped because I grouped this first, but I could drag this down and then I can go back and select this. I'll align the vertical alignments here. I'll regroup this object group, and then I will realign the vertical and horizontal for the actual text. And that's a quick way to edit the shape after you're done. The next step is to get this to the laser. So I will go up to file, print, and I'll select my VLS 350 as my printer. I need to go to setup. Now Illustrator does ask you a bunch of questions. There's uh, maybe a few more steps than other software to get this. I like to do don't show again on this and hit continue. And then it brings up your standard Windows print window here. I'm gonna select it and hit preferences. And now this is the material database for the laser system. I'm gonna be putting this on eighth inch acrylic. So I'm gonna select plastic, acrylic, continuous cast acrylic, and I'm gonna type in 0.125. I'll hit apply, okay, print, print. And then that's going to send it to the UCP control panel, which should be open in your tray. I'll click that here, and now I see the object is in my control panel. And we have other videos that go through the, the details on how to use this. So this the scope of this video is just to show you the Illustrator portion of it. And I'll link to the other videos in the description below for where, what to do from this point forward. Thanks for watching.